This video is to assist customers who want to send in their chronometers for repair. Many of our customers at Historic Timekeepers are unfamiliar with how to prepare it for shipping, how to receive it, how to put it back into the gimbal ring, and how to set it to a standard time source like the United States Naval Observatory. We will use several chronometers, both cased and uncased, so that it covers a wide variety of situations. So, when you receive your chronometer from us, this is what you should do. You go ahead and unscrew the bezel. Lay it glass down. This will be your work stand for when you have the chronometer out of the case. Now, you will notice that there is a slot here at 12 o'clock. That's called a keyway. There is a pin coming out of the dial adapter plate, which is the key. You line these up to make sure the chronometer is properly aligned when it goes back into the case. To remove it from the case, you make a claw grip around the threads of the case, tip it upside down, and the movement will drop right out. Lay the case down, take the movement and put it in your uh, bezel. Then, very gently, remove the paper wedge. When, when, when you get it from, when you are shipping it to us, you will make a paper wedge like this. Just a little spring, and you will insert it underneath the balance, very gently. You will see a lot of people say, use cork or something like that. What tends to happen there is people who are not familiar with chronometers, they wedge it in too tight, and they break a pivot, which creates a lot of damage when it's, un when it's unpacked. All right, so... Here is the pin, the key. Line it up with the keyway. Slip it into the case, and then it drops right down. When you go to replace the bezel, you don't automatically start screwing it on. The threads are very fine, just like a pocket watch, so you always start in reverse until you hear a click. Like that. Then you tentatively start screwing it to make sure you're not cross-threaded, and then you go ahead and screw it home. The reason you have to shift the chronometer with the balance locked is because if the escapement is not locked and there is no power, a lot of damage happens to the chronometer that can run into the thousands of dollars. Doing this simple exercise will prevent that damage and make sure that your chronometer stays as original as possible. And So how do you prepare a chronometer to be shipped to historic timekeepers? First of all, we do not want it in the box. All we want is the brass case movement. There's also a problem if you ship a chronometer mounted in the box. The chronometer is suspended by these two gimbal screws. And the chronometer itself weighs about eight pounds. If you ship it in those gimbal screws, no matter how well you think you have it packed, it will drop out of that gimbal, 
break the screws, and destroy the inside of the case. So you always remove the chronometer from the box whenever you're shipping it. Now, to remove the chronometer, you only need to, to release one gimbal screw. I use the one at 12 o'clock. You release the lock nut, the knurled lock nut. Can you see that? Let me get your left hand out of the way. Yes. Okay. You release that. Take a flat blade screwdriver and back out the gimbal screw. You don't need to remove it. Alright, then you tilt the movement and lift it out of the gimbal ring. Just like that. Huh. Extra stuff down here. Alright. That way, when you get the chronometer back, you only have the one screw to screw to screw back in and you haven't lost your centering adjustment. Okay, lock it. As you can tell, this chronometer is in original shape and we I have I don't believe in polishing the brass or all that other kind of stuff. Okay, so now you can see that the chronometer has time on it. Alright, 24 hours as it, since wound, since went since it was wound. You always want to, re to do this with some state of wind on the chronometer. Now, you unscrew the bezel. Just like on the other one, put the bezel down. You still have your keyway and your key at 12 o'clock. Put your claw grip on the threads, turn the bowl upside down, and out it drops. Oops. This chronometer has a balance break. Alright, so Mary, can you hand me your balance break wrench? If your Hamilton has one of these, well and good. You can use an uh, Allen key to release the balance break. And then you can also use it to actuate the balance brake. All it does is this fork sprint, this fork comes down and gently presses on the balance. That's it. Now, if you don't have the balance brake and your chronometer is running, all right? Again, you use something soft and gently stop it. Okay. Then you make a wedge, and I like this waxy paper kind of stuff, to act like a spring. And then you put the open end underneath the balance, between the balance and the plate. And now, the balance can't rotate. Okay? I'm going to remove that, since this has the brake on it. And I'll show you how to do the brake through the case. You pick up the chronometer back out of the crystal, line up the key and the keyway, Drop it in, screw the bezel backwards, that, yeah, I just heard a click, and then tentatively make sure you got the threads, and, dry, and bring it home.
Okay, now if you happen to have, all right, if you happen to have the wrench, it goes in through it goes in through the little hole here, and it comes into contact, and you can line it up with the uh, balance brake. And screw the balance brake up and uh, actuate or release the balance brake. Okay. Now, let's assume you don't have the balance brake. And you have just received it from us. It will be cleaner than this. Okay. So there you are, you don't have the balance break, right? and you've received it wedged from us. It's got a little bit of wind on it. Remove the wedge. For the moment, you want, as much, you want to avoid moving the balance, and I'll show you why. Now you line up the key and the keyway. Balance is stopped. Let's say you've got a time signal that's coming in at uh, uh, 4.49. And we're going to run this about halfway between. And actually, well, all right. All right. Should have used the key for that. Sorry, folks. Um, now, and right now, the and the current time is 4:45, right? So you're going to wait until three minutes for the next time signal, All right? Because it's, the second hand is resting around the 30, you put it, you put the minute hand halfway between the minute markers, 4:49 and 4:50. So you're watching what's coming from the time source. All right? It can be a beep, it can be a visual change in the, in the seconds on the clock. It's at 4.49, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, just a gentle rock starts it going. All right? You do not worry about it being exact. It will never stay exact. Chronometers were basically um, precision instruments that had a known calibration error. This calibration error was generally in the, in the uh, range of half a second to two seconds a day. And it would stay that way for three years. So what the navigator did is he knew it was set when he left port to Greenwich time. He would then, and he knew that it had, say, a one second day slow error compared to Greenwich, which was done with a celestial transit, a zenith. So what he would do is would multiply the days at sea by the error rate, the daily error rate of the chronometer, and then adjust dial and mentally, arithmetically adjust the dial time using the calibration error to, to get to derive back to Greenwich time. They would never ever set the hands for three years. They wouldn't set the hands backwards. They wouldn't set the they, they wouldn't play with the seconds hand. The only thing they did was wind it every 24 hours. And that was a very important job on the ship. So don't you ever turn the seconds hand, don't turn the hands backwards. I try to set the chronometers so that they're around a half a second to a second per day slow. That way, when if you want to adjust it back to near civil time, all you have to do is once a month, once every two months, move the minute hand forward one minute. End of story. When you get the chronometer back from us and you are ready to case it, 
you have started it running, you've got it synchronized. You had sent it to us, By simply removing, by simply backing out the rear gimbal screw, the 12 o'clock gimbal screw. So unlock the gimbal, run out the lock nut, back out the gimbal screw. You will engage the six o'clock pivot hole into the gimbal into the gimbal pivot at six o'clock. The way you do it, the way I do it, is I hold it 90 degrees to the gimbal, seat the bracket into the onto the gimbal pivot, and then locate the 12 o'clock hole, and then screw in. The 12 o'clock pivot and then back out the lock nut. And there you have it.